Okay, so the subject is uh, treating trauma uh, with Shiatsu and TCM. And this is really a part of the whole area, wider area, of working on the psycho-emotional level. And we're going to be putting treating trauma in that context this evening. There'll be plenty of time for you to ask questions and also interact with us. And I'll just show you how that works. Okay, so we'll spend a little bit of time explaining how the webinar works, then talk about the online course. We'll give you an overview of the Treating Trauma Online course. But before we do that, let's find out something about you. And what we're going to do now is we're going to launch a poll. Right? In fact, Shakura, who's assisting me this evening. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, Shakura, who's sitting next to me, is going to launch a poll, find out about how many of you have already done a webinar, and then I'll know how to pitch the introduction. So let's see. Let's see what happens with this. Oh, here we go. We've had 86% voted so far. If there's anyone out there who's not on an iPad, if you're on an iPad, you won't be able to vote because it doesn't support the pop-up windows, I'm afraid. Um, 91%, 95%, we're nearly there. 100% voted. Fantastic. Well done. Time. Thank you very much, everyone. Everyone is totally on the ball. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at the poll results. Oh, so actually about a third of you have already attended a webinar, but two thirds haven't. So I think we'd better spend a little bit of time uh, finding out about how they work. Okay, very good. Very A very big welcome to everyone who's, um, whose first webinar this is. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, this is how it works. You'll find you've got a control panel floating on your screen, and this gives you, um, it gives you control over what happens in your interaction. <clears throat> what you can do is if you've got a question about the webinar, you can type it in the questions box and we'll see it on our control panels. And Shakura will keep an eye on that and she'll feed the questions to me and Dinah. And then we'll try and, we'll try and answer them as the webinar proceeds. Okay. Um, what we'll do also is if you um, would like to actually talk to us, which will be very exciting if you do. If you've got a, a computer headset and microphone, um, then you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to actually ask questions by putting a hand up. So what you do is you click on the hand. I'll just put my little hand over it there. So you click on the hand and um, then what we'll do is we'll unmute you and you can talk to everyone and you it's like a kind of like a live radio phone in that kind of thing okay <clears throat> so let's find out a little bit about you we're going to launch a couple of polls um, about um, who you are and where you are so I'll do that right now um, are you are you a yes? Are you a Shiatsu yeah. student, Shiatsu practitioner, Shiatsu practitioner and teacher, a non Shiatsu therapist or other? Okay, so let's see. Okay, so what have we got? 96% voted. Um, Where's that other person? 100%! 100%. Yay! <laughs> okay. And look, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the results. Ah, students practice. Oh, we're all Shiatsu people. Hello out there. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, we're all Shiatsu people this time. Sometimes we have a non Shiatsu therapist and other people um, attending. Okay, now let's find out where you are. Let's find out where you are. Let's see how geographically spread we are this time. <laughs> Okay, 68% voted, 9, 72, 76, 80. The votes are coming in. We're 
so far all from Europe and Scandinavia. Whoa, anyone from anywhere else? Let's have a look. Just waiting for that last vote to bring it up to 100%. Okay, now I think we should close the poll. And everyone is from Europe. Well, that's very unusual. Usually we have a bit of a scattering from America and Africa, but that's interesting. Okay, great. So we know a little bit about you. We're all Shiatsu people, we're all from Europe. So here we are. Okay, cool, great. Let's continue. Right, you might be wondering what the online courses are like. We've already had lots of people asking us questions about the online course courses. So I'm just going to give you a short guide to what they're like, just to get an idea. Okay, the main uh, the main thing to, to know about them is they're asynchronous. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is unlike this webinar, you don't have to actually be online at any particular time. And that's what makes them so flexible, especially if you're in a different time zone, which a lot of our students are. Um, uh, what it means is you can access the resources at any time. Uh, you can look at the videos, the audio, um, and follow the lessons in your own time. They start off with objectives for each week. They're five weeks long, and they start off with the objectives. In other words, what's going to be covered, what you're going to be up to in that week, what we're all going to be up to. And then there's a list of resources, and that can be a variety of different things. Uh, we use a lot of video, video, audio, um, and also text-based reading. And then each week you have like an assignment or an activity for you to do to complete that week. And that usually means uh, publishing it or putting your work up on a forum. And the whole group then interact with the tutors. So it's a very learner-led kind of environment. And everyone kind of shares their experiences. <clears throat> and that completes the week. <clears throat> so that's what it's like. And this is what it looks like. This is the beginning of the course. When you click into it, you'll see this screen and you'll see there's lots of links. If I go in a bit closer, you'll see inside the course, this is week one. You'll see there's a couple of videos to watch. There's quite a bit of audio to listen to. And then you'll see the overview, which gives you an overview of what's happening. And then you can click on the assignment discussion. That tells you what we're going to be discussing this week. And then as you, if you finish all the weeks, then obviously we credit you with the CPD hours. And there's an example of a video resource. This is Peter Levine. Um, he's a great, there's a great video, which is in week one. Okay, so that's what the online courses are like. And so now we can just think a little bit about the whole issue of treating trauma um, with Shiatsu and TCM. Okay, and I've just been joined by my colleague, Dinah. Um, and I'll just unmute her so she can say, say hello to you. Hang on one second here. Uh, yep. Okay. Hello, Dinah. Can you, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Hi, everybody. Sorry to be late. <laughs> no, you come perfectly time. I've just finished the introduction, Dinah. You came perfectly, perfectly on cue. Okay, great. Okay, so we're just having, having a, a, an overview of the psycho-emotional level um, in Shiatsu. Um, I'm going to keep you unmuted at the moment, Dinah, because I'm not getting any echo or anything. So that's really, really good. Um, okay, the great thing about Shiatsu is that it's a somatic approach to psycho-emotional problems. It's a body, appro body work approach, and that gives it a lot of advantages over just having a purely therapeutic, purely talking-based approach to treating trauma or any other psycho-emotional problem. Um, and that's actually one of the features in the video, in uh, one of the videos in week one. Um, the whole psycho-emotional being uh, is represented by the idea of the Shen, which is sometimes translated as consciousness or mind, which I'm sure you're familiar with from your Shiatsu studies. And so a lot of um, Shiatsu, it, Shiatsu on this topic is, it revolves around treating the Shen and supporting the Shen. Of course, there are many other meridians involved, which we will deal with in a minute when we go on to it. And of course, the meridians as functions, what we can do is we can use the meridian system to connect 
the body mind together and Shiatsu is a very sophisticated and very effective system for doing exactly that. And another thing that um, I'm just going to mute because I'm getting a little bit of an echo. Sometimes we get a bit of an echo here. We've got too many people muted. There we are. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Just starting to get a bit of an echo coming in there. Um, yeah. And body memory, which is kind of a more modern idea about cellular memory and uh, how the body stores memories, is obviously something that we work a lot with with Shiatsu. And modern interpretations of the meridians, based on Masanaga's and Pauline Sasaki's work, see the meridians as holographic structures in the whole body at a cellular level. And so we can use them to interpret body memory um, as part of our work. And we'll be dealing in quite a bit about that on the online course. OK, so now it's uh, time for an overview of the actual course itself. And then what I'll do for the rest of the webinar is I'm going to just go through uh, through some of the material and some of the structures of the course. And then we can have a, some, uh, I've got an exercise for you, some more polls. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll just see how we go. OK, so the first thing we do in the online course is we look at the energetic actions of trauma and we do some uh, experiential work on that. We then look at diagnosis and we've got some special techniques that we're going to teach you. There's some uh, quite advanced energy work techniques, temporal scanning techniques that we uh, that we share with you on the course. We then go into the theory, which is uh, based on Shiatsu and TCM theory, um, and then treatment methods, common things that will happen to you when you're treating uh, trauma and other stressful emotional uh, conditions. And then finally, week five, we put it all together. We get you to present cases, and that's usually a really good part of the course where we can uh, start using all the material and getting feedback from your tutor and from your, and from your peers. OK. Oh, she has. OK, great. So shall we see if we can unmute her? Shall I do that? Let's see if I can find her. Let's find her hand. Oh, we've got two hands. We've got Philippa Bush uh, as well. Tams, and let's just see if it's not a mistake. Let's see if she really does want to talk to us. It'd be great if she does. Um, I'm going to unmute her. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tam Tamson, can you hear me? Uh, yes, but it was a mistake. It was a mistake. Oh, but it's great to I'm hear sorry. you. No, that's okay. That's okay. It's lovely to hear your voice too. Oh, great. It's great to have you on the webinar, Tamson. And now that we've proved that it works, if you do have any questions you want to say anything later, then we'll we'll put you online. <laughs> I'll try and work out what it was I did that made it, that made it happen. You clicked on that. You clicked on putting your hand up. That's what it was. Okay. But, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Not at all. Great to hear you. There we are. So it really <laughs> works. Okay. There we are. Yeah. Tams has put her hand up. Oh, and yeah, I think Philip has taken her hand down immediately because she's realised she's done the same thing. Oh, no. She's put it back up again. Philip has put it up again. Should we just see? Let's just see. Hi there. I, Philippa. I have to press on that by mistake. Yeah. Ah, okay. It was a mistake. Yep, but it's working. Great. Yep. Good. Thank yeah, you for that. Okay. That's perfect. <laughs> okay, great. So the system works. We proved it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Right. Excellent. Did you want to say anything, Dinah, at this stage? Or should we just should we get going a bit more? You're fine so far. Right. Okay. Okay. So let's have a look at the next slides. There we go. All right. Okay. So a big part of the course is mapping the energetic functions of the meridians in TCM and in Shiatsu. Um, wait a minute, I'm going to just uh, mute Shakura because I'm getting a little bit of an echo here. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's mapping the uh, natural physiological responses of trauma with the meridians. And this is one of the things we've been working on for quite a few years. Um, we've got several stages um, in, the, in the natural physiological response. The first one is like a fight or flight uh, response. That's when you're first faced with a threat. It's the adrenal response. And that gives you the impetus or the um, energy to either 
uh, run away or to fight the, the, um, the threat. What happens then in the natural world is, let's just take an example of, say, an antelope being chased by a tiger or a lion. The antelope will first go into the adrenal response. It will run as fast as it can away from the, the, um, the lion. As the lion closes on the prey, what the natural response of the prey is to freeze. And the reason for that is because that's a very good defense because predator animals are designed or they're programmed to run after things that are alive, that are running around. So the freeze response is a natural response. And what will happen is the animal will be very, very uh, still and hope that the predator moves on. What happens after that, if they are attacked in the freeze response stage, is they then go into dissociation and what that does is it allows them to not feel any pain and be outside of the whole experience. And then what will happen if they escape and the lion trots off and runs after another antelope is that they will discharge the energy of the traumatic experience and that is, in animals, that's uh, mainly through violent involuntary shaking. Once that cycle of discharge is completed, then they'll trot off and they'll be absolutely fine. And this uh, physiological response was noticed and documented and studied by Peter Levine. Um, and quite a lot of the course is influenced by his work. What we've been doing is we've been mapping these natural responses to the meridians and to the shiatsu theory in practice. What I've found, my own experience, is that by understanding these responses and what happens, it just makes you that much more confident um, in treating trauma and other related stress-related uh, conditions. It makes you much more confident and much more able to deal with them when they come up in, in natural practice. Okay, and now it's time to find out more about you. <laughs> okay, we thought we'd find out now just how experienced you are. We've got, we've got some, um, yeah, we've got some polls to find out how experienced you are, how many shiatsus you're doing, and also whether you've had experience of working with trauma. So let's launch the first one, shall we? Let's see. Okay, we've Okay, 87% voted, 90%. Okay, so let's have a look. Oh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. We've got a sort of, it, we've got a, a bulge either side. <laughs> we've got um, quite a lot of, relatively inexperienced people, not to three, to about a third of you have been only been practicing for about three years, up to three years, but another third have actually been practicing more than 12 years, so you've got a lot of experience. Okay, so let's find out how many treatments you're doing. Should we just launch the next poll and just see how many treatments they're doing? How many treatments do you do in a typical week? Let's see. Okay, very good, thank you for voting. Okay, there we go. So most of you are doing between up to about 10 a week, 10 treatments a week, yeah? But I'll be interested to know, we, we can't do that now, but we be interested to know how that splits off. I assume the more experienced practice, you're probably doing more clients in the week, aren't they? Okay, so the next final question in this little group is, have you ever treated someone with trauma before? Let's just see whether you've encountered that in your practice, let's see. Wow, here we go. This is an interesting look. Yeah? Look at this. 
79%, the vast majority of you have treated trauma or encountered treating trauma in your practice. So it's obviously something that's very common, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to, I'll just try unmuting you, Diana, so you can uh, join in a bit. Let's see. Yeah. There we are. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you, and um, yeah, that's quite a dramatic figure, isn't it? And and what a shame! Our world is so full of traumatized people. But how brilliant that they've all found their way to, to, to Shiatsu. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. Now we've got some more activity for you. We're going to do a temporal scanning exercise, and this is taken adapted from the course. Um, just. Uh, You'll need a piece of paper, actually. So if you like to just uh, go and get a piece of paper and some pens or colored pens, we're going to do an exercise together. OK. So we're all getting our paper together, aren't we? <laughs> we're all doing it here. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to divide uh, the piece of paper up into three, uh, three boxes. So three separate boxes. And then what I'll, what I'll do is I'll lead you through three different, get, take you into three different memories. And we're just going to experience, we're just going to experience how that affects our energy. And we're going to draw a picture in each of these boxes of how our energy changes as we go through all of these exercises okay the middle the middle one of the exercise i'll be take i'm going to encourage you to think of a stressful time obviously what you have to do with this is not to go too deeply into it and if you have had any trauma in your own life in the past then i encourage you not to go into it and in this exercise and just think of a just a general stressful time um, in your life and if you feel any adverse effects from the exercise, then just go back into a safe space, okay? And um, and everything will be fine. Okay, so let's try it. So first of all, I want you to just close your eyes and just scan through your whole body. Scan through your whole body. And just notice if you're carrying attention anywhere or if there's any areas that feel blocked or weak or needing release and then we're just going to just gently shake out any areas of tension just to kind of get a bit of a blank canvas to do the exercise shaking out we're all shaking here in the office <laughs> oh this is one of the best things i've done all day actually just get this there we are okay everyone ready yep okay good OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to think back to a time when we were very happy. We'd be happy, enthusiastic. OK, I would like you to think back to a time when you were happier and happy and enthusiastic. Okay. I just want you to imagine the feeling that you have in your energy as you go back to that time. Just notice anywhere in your energy that becomes more active, anywhere that becomes quieter. OK. Now, that feeling of being happy and excited, I want you to see if you can turn that into an image that you can draw. So just see if you can imagine that as an image. OK, and then we're going to draw that in the first of the three boxes, the happy and in, um, kind of happy, enthusiastic type of feeling. OK, so I'm going to draw that. OK, 
Okay, so that's the first drawing. Okay, we'll just shake out again. Just do it shaking, get that feeling out. Get back to the blank canvas again. Okay, ready? <laughs> ready for part two? Yep, okay. Right, okay, so now we're going to go back in time and we're just going to think of a stressful time. Think of a stressful or difficult time. And see what happens to your energy then. Notice any places that you tighten up or feel active or underactive. Scan through your body and just see what kind of pattern you get when you think back to a stressful time. Okay. Now see if you can turn that into an image. And we're going to draw that. But before we do, it's very important to shake it out, as we'll find out later. OK, so let's just shake out that feeling until we completely get back to the uh, blank slate again, keeping the image in our mind. And then when you're ready. You can draw it in the second box. Okay. Very good. Okay, ready? For part three. Yep. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, the third one we're going to do is we're going to do calm. Calm. Yep. Okay. So let's close our eyes, go back into that neutral space again. And now let's think of a time in the past where we felt completely calm and peaceful. Take that into your body, that feeling, that body memory. See what happens to your energy. Calm and peaceful. Okay, scan your body. Less shaking required this time. Okay, just a little bit of shaking. And then go to your third picture and just see what effect that's had on your body. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to start a chat now. This is another little interactive way that we can uh, get um, in touch. And so I've just put a chat out to everyone. Um, so if you open up your chat uh, thing on the bottom of your panel, if you just click on that, on the little arrow, it should open it and you should see a message. It says, Cliff Andrews to all. How did your drawings turn out? Were they very different? And you can type the reply there. We can get a little bit of interaction there. So if, you, if you'd like to do that, and you, you'll find that you can um, you know, send us a message through that. And you can also use that to ask any questions if you're not confident of your audio um, and you, know, you want to uh, 
comment or question on anything about the webinar. Okay, great. Okay, so that's an exercise exploring the energetic action of um, memories in the body. And we use a modification of that in the course as part of the diagnostic diagnostic methods. Okay, so now it's time. We've got half an hour left now. Time's flying past. We've got half an hour left. And we can now have a look at some of the material, go a little bit deeper into some of the material. And this is week one. Uh, no, week two, diagnosis. And you can see this is one of the notes, from one of the overview notes from the course. And what it does is it goes into more detail, common symptoms of trauma response. This gives you an idea of the kind of things that clients might come to you with. And as we found out with the poll, we've already, a lot of you have already experienced treating trauma. And what will start to happen once you go deeper into it is you'll start to recognize common symptoms um, and you'll be able to identify what part of the trauma response they come from. And then later on, we'll find out how we can work with Shiatsu with the Meridian system. Okay. I think I'm going to turn, I'm going to get Dina in on this. Oh, they have. Oh, okay. Yes, here we go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Great. I've got. Um... All right. I've got uh... oh, in the question section. Let's have a look. Oh, yes. We've got loads of. Oh, Nilsa. Yes, I've got. Oh, I can see. We've got loads of, loads of people in the question center question area let's have a look let's have a look at some of them oh we've got spiral sarah gives us sarah that's interesting can you see these can we, can we got these in the yeah yeah what i'll do is i'll um just uh i'm gonna unmute diner might get a little bit of echo but it'll be interesting to see what she her comments she has here there we are there we are can you you can hear me. Can I hear you, Dinah? I can hear you, yes. And um, like, Sarah, like Sarah, I've got uh, uh, my pictures were very, very different. Yeah. I think probably we all experienced that. And um, I also had a downwardy, strong downward movement with the stressful one down the front of my body. And she's put also a downward. <coughs> A downward feeling, and uh, she also had a calm spiral for her calm feeling. It was a spiral. Mine was more sort of waves going out, but it has a similar feeling from what she wrote. So yeah. I'm, I'm sure that there's quite a, um, a link between our different responses. There'll be some that are no doubt different, but us all being human beings means that we'll share quite a lot of those responses. Yeah, Caroline says that um, the stressful one was different from the other two. The body language was closed, and the other two were more open. Yeah. Um, and David said that they're, you know, David said that they're very different. Nilsa as well has given us quite, a, quite a lot of. Um, yeah, interesting. I think the thing is, what happens is you'll get different patterns depending on the meridians and the constitutional meridians that everyone has, don't you? So mm. there are there are going to be similarities, but there are going to be. Um, differences too. I mean, I was quite surprised because the second uh, one, it really went down more into my abdomen. I felt it really tight around my abdomen, which I don't think I've experienced before. Quite often it gets me more in the chest area, you know, so that was, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, um, I was aware of my jaw to my surprise. All right, yeah, interesting. And we've got Nicole and yes, and Tams and all pitching in. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Can everybody read everybody's? They click on questions. Yeah, we've got click show answered question. Um, oh no, these are these are all questions. They're all being put in the questions slot. That's right. Um, uh, if you would like any of your uh, comments to be sent to everyone, you can click into the chat section, which is at the bottom of the control panel. Um, I assume that's there anyway, but um, if it's not. Um, it doesn't matter because they're coming through the question bit anyway. That's the that's the main thing. We've written them out. Uh, yeah, Philippa says that they're 
that they were um, very different in texture. So that's interesting, yeah. Yeah. Okay, right, great. That's absolutely great. Um, okay, so anyway, let's get back to the, uh, the slides now. Um, thank you for all your for all your uh, contributions there. Oh, hang on. Here's Sarah says she can't see the chat section. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Well, maybe that's. Uh, let's have a look. Maybe that's. It's down the bottom of the blue horizontal list, Sarah. Yeah. You should find chat, but there's nothing much in it except for. Um, it's underneath polls, but there's just Cliff's I, original and yeah. Shakira's answer. Yeah. I wonder. Hmm, that's, yeah, okay, well, maybe maybe it doesn't appear on the control panel, who knows, but, we're, but it doesn't matter anyway, because it, we're seeing all of your typing in the question section, so that's great. And don't forget, you can always put your hand up and go live on air if you if you want, if, would like to. Right, okay, so here's some typical common symptoms um, in the different trauma response, and I'm sure you'll recognize these from your own experience in Shiatsu. Um, hypervigilance... Um, is a quite a common trauma symptom and or stress even stress symptom and what that means is you're stuck in the adrenal response which means that you literally can't rest insomnia is a an inability to rest is a, is a very common uh, symptom of that have you had much experience of that Dinah of hypervigilance I think it's really common actually um, just even things like insomnia clients, you know, who have a stressful life and you not necessarily triggered by a trauma, just by an ongoing stress pattern that perhaps goes back to childhood. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, in fact, I'm thinking of one of my clients immediately who lost her father when during the war. She's German and um, and the mother was grieving inconsolably throughout this girl's childhood. She's now in her 70s and she never has slept all her life and she's always been hectic all her life and I'd say that that's a kind of she could never console her mother and I think on some level that there's uh, she's blood deficient in TCM terms yes. and I think a lot of it is a kind of hypervigilance that goes back to the trauma in the family mm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll look at the TCM correlations a little bit later. Uh, mm. This is an interesting one for the shiatsu, for shiatsu um, the second one, the freeze response, because this is where you actually feel, or they, they, sometimes a client will tell you, and sometimes you just feel it. You'll feel that some parts, or sometimes the whole of the body, um, feels like it's frozen, and you get this feeling of numbness or, um, yeah, feeling that it's not really connected to them properly. Um, and that's something that does respond really well to shiatsu and body work more than any yeah. other type of uh, uh, therapy. Okay, dissociation. This is something that you may very well notice in clients, or, or they may report it to you. That, in fact, I've had any number of clients say this to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I too. don't really feel like I'm in the world properly. I don't feel like I'm properly connected to my body. That kind of thing. Yep. Um, yep. You get this quite often. You see a vacant look, um, and. It can lead to all kinds of obviously emotional and relationship problems. But it's that feeling of not really quite being in your body. Um, now, what happens if, if this, if these stages patterns. and patterns and stages are not discharged properly or dealt with? Then you get resulting um, issues, and one of them is this undischarged energy that we mentioned before, and that's when it can really start turning into more overt. Uh, behavior like aggression and anger, inappropriate sexual behavior, or violence, shouting. I mean, you can see there's so many areas of st stress and trauma in the world now. I'm thinking of Syria and, um, you know, that's a classic war zone thing where this, where this uh, undischarged energy just gets fueled back into anger and more violence and the whole thing just escalates. It's very, very difficult to bring the whole thing down because what it What's happening there is reinforcing behaviour from undischarged trauma, mm -hmm. and then obviously that can then lead on to other things. For example, uh, for example, grief. This is getting more into secondary effects, um, and then one of the things that you're likely to experience if you do body work 
and you get spontaneous release of undischarged energy from trauma, it's a shaking response. Has that ever happened to you, Donna, where you've had clients go into that response? Then? Yes, I have. Yeah, as, uh, more commonly crying, but I have had a couple of shakers as well. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. And it can be quite cr quite frightening, actually, for both the therapist yeah. and the client, can't it, yeah. when that happens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And really understanding what's happening is really, really, I find it, when I, once I actually studied this and got into it, I felt so much more confident yeah. dealing with it because it's a totally natural process. And what you want to read to is just allow the client to slowly and safely go through that discharging process. So, yeah, and that's one of the places where our training is so helpful because it's about staying grounded and centered in Ahara and just providing a calm, loving, compassionate place for them to discharge as they need to, knowing they're safe. Exactly, yeah. That's really precious ability, that, that, uh, you know, thing that we can offer. Yeah, that's great. absolutely, yeah, that's right. Okay, so now, how, have we got, how are we doing? Oh, we're, time is running. We'll just keep, we'll just steadily work through this. The next thing that we, we deal with is questioning. Um, and as Dana was just saying, a lot of it is supporting the gentle approach. There's some vid excellent videos in part one um, in the first week, which starts tomorrow, <laughs> about that, how to question gently so that you don't re-traumatize. Because a lot of problems with therapy is yeah, it can actually re-traumatize a client by taking them too quickly back into their memories. I uh, will show you how to use clean questions. That's a really useful technique. And I see that Nick is on our list of attendees. Oh, really? Oh, Nick's yeah. there. Hello, Nick. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> and this is exactly where we got all the clean questioning information from Nick Pohl. And we've actually done online courses, which are very successful, been very successful and great fun. I know because I've been on all of them myself. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got some Greek attendees who have recently had Nick in Athens, I believe. All right, yeah. So there we are. Yep, it's all, um, it's all happening. <laughs> um, we'll also be working with timeline techniques, placing the questioning a lot on a timeline. We'll talk about that more later. And the other uh, technique is just sensing the energy, feeling the atmosphere around the client and can give you a lot of energetic information that you can work into your shiatsu treatment. Oh, has she? Oh, great. Okay, let's see if we can um, unmute her. Let me have a look here. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, Antigone, here we are. Okay, let's see if we can... Uh... I'll just see if I can unmute. Here we go. Let's see if this works. Antigone, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Are we... Hello, we can hear you. Hi, Antigone. I just Hi. wanted to say hello from Greece because you mentioned. Hey. Hi to Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and to, and to, to say about the clean questions, which I try after your uh, course when you had been in Athens. Yes. And after Nick's uh, course when uh, he did it last month. Last uh, before two weeks. Oh yeah, so recently, yeah, okay. Very recently, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> from my from my experience, clean questions are very useful in in this what we are going to do. Yes, and thank you. Yeah. To say hello. Yeah, well, it's lovely to hear your voice from Greece. Yeah, Great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I miss you guys. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Okay. It's nice to see. Nice to hear your voice. Anyway, we will see you soon. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, and I'll here, be on tomorrow. Yes. Great. Great. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> and and okay. Nick says hello to us as well. Hello, Nick. <laughs> oh, Sylvia Mori. Okay, let's just see if, she, if she's got what she's got to say. We've got lots of people with their hand up. Let's just see if this is... Sylvia. Sylvia, can you hear me? Uh, yes, please. Ah, oh, we can hear you loud Hi. and clear. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Sylvia. Where are you, Sylvia? Hey, You're in Italy? Yes, I'm in Italy, yes. Uh, there we go. Fantastic. There we are. We've got a pan-European webinar going on here. <laughs> Did you want to comment anything about the webinar so far or about anything about the topic? Uh, well, uh, if you just can explain timeline. Yes. Huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah, the timeline is basically um, 
it's part of a technique that we use more with the uh, temporal scanning techniques, which I'm going to describe a little bit later on. And basically, what we what you often find with um, I think I can hear something in Italy there. I think so. I think it's a dog barking. <laughs> yeah. Um, what we what you find you often find is that an initial trauma will will then set off um, like resonances through time when they're triggered by other events, and we have a technique whereby we plot them on a timeline, and then we can have either work back through time or go back to the original trauma and work forwards. So that's what it is. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it in a minute. Thank okay. you. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. In the questions box, let's have a look. What have we got here? Um, oh yeah, here we go. Here's a message from. All oh, right, here we go. Cliff, I took this course with you in 2005 in Switzerland. It's been amazingly helpful. I've actually taken it to another level. With consciousness of genetics. Oh, that's a good development. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. With past life experiences resulting in patterns of trauma in the present life. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because that's an option is to go into the past life things. And that's actually one of the options we have in week five. If, you, if anyone's really advanced with the temporal scanning and they want to go a bit further, then we do exactly that kind of thing. Okay, great. Well, this is I think this is the most active webinar we've had in terms of participants. Thank you very, very much. Right, let's just move on now because time is rushing. We've only got 30 minutes left. Oh, look, and here it is, temporal scanning. Just in case you're interested in this, and I'll just uh, look for this. It's an advanced technique. We use a timeline, um, and what we do is we scan back through time, and it enables us to do like a body scan, which is essentially the same as we've just experienced on ourselves just now. We can do that on our client, um, and we can also do a higher diagnosis at a particular point in time. And that's very useful for kind of working at the core, the root of a particular uh, client's issues. Of course, what we also have is we have all the theory to understand uh, how the meridians work. Um, so we can get a body scan back in time and we can also do a Hara, Kyojitsuhara and work that uh, kind of like in a different zone. It's, it's like a holographic type of approach. If you've done any uh, body scanning or any more advanced techniques like that and you'll be familiar with the idea. Okay, look, here's the theory bit. Here's just We just have a little look at this. Um, some of it will probably be uh, quite, uh, quite obvious. You can probably work this out for yourself, some of it. Um, Actually, we had a we had a student, didn't we, Bianca, who did a uh, who I think she's just, she's joined us now. Yeah, Bianca's joined us. Great. She was wasn't here at the start, but yeah, she did a, a dissertation on um, on treating trauma, which I'm rereading right now. I've skim read it. I'm I'm going through it, and she's got some interesting input, especially on medication. Uh, that was back in 2007. I recently met her um, on a workshop in Germany. Um, and she covers a lot of this in her dissertation. I'm just rereading re it because some great stuff on medication, which I might even be able to work in later on with her permission, work in later on in the course. Um, yeah, so as you might expect, the fight or flight uh, response is uh, related mainly to the kidneys in TCM, kidney yang. What happens is kidney yang is affected immediately and then kidney yin, if it's a prolonged f series of stress, that tends to be affected. Um, the freeze response is a really interesting one. You've obviously got the fire element meridians that go into like the shock uh, response. So you've got the triple heater and the heart protector. But what you will also find is that if it's prolonged, you'll get a lot of stagnation. And that stagnation is more usually mapped to the gallbladder and liver. Um, this also reminds me of a workshop of Nicola's at one time where we worked with um, fear being frozen into the spine. And she worked with freeing up the vertebrae of the All spine, right. it was how fear had got trapped and affecting the bladder. All right. So that's worth also considering in the freeze response. Right, yeah, that's interesting, <coughs> isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Mm. <coughs> and then dissociation mainly is relates to the Shen. Um, so yeah. the initial feeling of being out of your body is initially as associated with the Shen. But extreme cases, when you really feel totally out of your body and you look down, that's Associated with the hun leaving the leaving the body in TCM. 
Um, and then we've got the undischarged energy we mentioned earlier, which can go into the shaking response. And that's mainly related to liver key stagnation. Grief, as you'd probably um, imagine, is related to lung and large intestine function. And then the shaking response is liver uh, is described in TCM as liver wind. That's what shaking actually is. And that's part of the discharging function. So that's kind of an overview of mapping some of the trauma responses to theory. Um, yeah. And we're going to go so to I would more. suggest that grief is probably also, um, over time, would tend to affect the heart as well as the lung. Right. They will, we will do, won't it? Yeah. 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 Because the heart allows the ability to feel all of our feelings. <laughs> anyway, so. Yeah. Really, the heart is really central to the whole thing, isn't mm. it? The Shen, mm. as, we just, as we mentioned earlier. Um, yeah. In fact, actually, I'm doing a workshop this weekend in Zurich. On exactly that, the upper heater, and I've been okay. reading a lot about that, the yeah. relationship between the yeah. heart and the and the, yeah. and the lungs. They're yeah. all in the upper heater, and they're all about the zonki and all the rest of it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see what's next. Ooh. Okay, treatment. Here we go. Yep, treatment. Okay, so here, here's just a little bit of an introduction to some of the treatment um, suggestions that we cover in the course. Um, and you can just have a quick look through this. We have a look at it. Um, probably don't need to work all the way through it. Um, but obviously, some of the actions of the points are directly related to supporting trauma. And we go deeper into those, into the actions of the points. And we'll also be... Uh, discussing individual cases and how to do it, how to deal with um, individual manifestations. Okay. Oh, great. Oh, great. Thank you, Bianca. They can't hear you. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Oh, yes. Sorry. Shakura just says that Bianca's got, says she, she's given me permission to use, obviously I'll reference her. Um, but yeah, if we could, um, there's definitely some inf uh, useful information in the... Yeah. Um, Alan, Alan, it's an Alan, Alan Tauch. Oh, Alain, Alain says, is, is Bianca's paper available? It, we haven't got it available at the moment, have we? Because um, it's uh, we've only got a hard copy. Um, but yes, if we can get a digital copy of it, and if we have permission, then it would be, be great to make it more widely available. If you uh, want to get in touch with me, I can always get you in touch with uh, Bianca. She's living in Hamburg at the moment, so if you're around... German German area, northern Germany, then you could um, get in touch with her directly or get through, in touch through email. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's see. I think when you're doing an actual overall session, what you're doing is you're working with a combination of the temporal scans, the HARA diagnosis, then you feed in the information from the TCM and combine that with the knowledge of the different trauma uh, physiological responses yeah. and so you're going to be doing quite a wide variety of different techniques sometimes you'll be tonifying supporting the yin supporting the shen other times it will be more moving um, sometimes it'll be supporting the discharging unfreezing the body um, encouraging uh, a safe space for them to get in touch with the discharging um, and so on and we, and we um, and in the course we we allow you to bring all those threads together and that's what it says, putting it together. There we are. <laughs> We've just got five minutes left. So, yeah. So, basically, by the end of the course, what you should be able to do is um, detect uh, trauma symptoms, which is by identifying the different patterns and the different uh, stages of physiological, uh, physiological process of trauma. And then using the clean question techniques, gently work, gently explore or gently allow the um, client to explore the somatics of, of the uh, condition themselves. Then what we do is we do a timeline temporal scan, which is the same kind of technique where we go back and we map the body scan and the HARA. Do the temporal HARA diagnosis, that gives us a focus for the treatment. And then we think about what is the do dominant trauma response, because that will that will um, it will kind of guide us to what kind of stage we're at within within the bodywork techniques that we're using. I would, one thing I haven't mentioned, which I must mention now, is that I think I can say that all of the clients that I've treated with severe trauma have all 
been either been in therapy or have done a lot of therapy, talking therapy yeah. themselves. Yeah. And Chats, who I found, really works really well in combination with that. I mean, I don't know what you found either. But... Yeah, no, exactly. And um, as you say, they they often the people that I've treated as well have been having psychotherapy of some kind, talking therapy. Yeah. And um, I think one of the brilliant things about Chatsu is that we can address the trauma that is trapped within the body memory within the connective tissue or whatever and and it's, so it's a fantastic adjunct you know to go go alongside the talking therapy that should connect with how it feels in their bodies so yeah, yeah. and at, you know that last point dominant trauma response question mark it is really valuable just having an understanding of the stages of trauma physiological response just to empower you in working with your clients yeah, I found that. And I found one of the most um, powerful things is really just reassuring the client that it's completely yeah. normal because you do yeah. feel so, you know, sort of isolated in a way and yeah. quite often very frightened of what's happening. And just knowing that that's a normal thing is reassuring for both you and, and the client because yes. <laughs> it can be a very frightening thing. Okay, and then obviously we use Kion Jitsu and point actions when we're doing the actual treatment. Okay, so that's that's it. We've just got a couple of minutes left. If there's any um, questions or comments that you'd like to share with us. Oh, oh yes. Bianca, Bianca's just been in touch to say that she'd love people to get in touch with her about her dissertation and she sends love from hand. Oh, great. Okay. Well, in that case, you can just email us and we'll pass on her email address. Just uh, either email Shakura or, or me. Um, I suppose the other thing, while we've got two minutes, we could just say that obviously if you'd like to join us on the online course and you haven't already subscribed, I think we've got a few places left, haven't we? We've got three three places for sure that are, that are free. That that brings us up to will bring us up to the maximum number of the course. We only take a maximum of 10, 12 students because we found that's the optimum number um, to create a really a good interactive group. And uh, we haven't mentioned how much it costs. It costs £145 for the whole five weeks, including everything. And it's a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah. terrific value, actually. Yeah, and that really? includes, it is. And, and in fact, actually, Shakura has been, I've saw, I saw her sending out invoices today, and she's actually been doing like an easy pay thing as well, haven't you? Yeah, installments as well. So if you, if, you know, if you want to pay us bit by bit, that's fine too, if, you're, you know, if the money's an issue. Uh, we'd love to see you on the course. That would be great. Um, we've had really, really good feedback from that from all the online courses, but particularly this one. Yeah. And uh, so, what it enables you to do is really is to explore uh, working with all these techniques over five weeks. That's the advantage in doing it over five weeks rather than um, just a weekend. You get a chance to really work with it, have lot, you know, ask as many questions as you like, and get feedback from your tutor and from your peers. That's that's one thing. Oh yes. Let's have a look. Um, let's have a look, Caroline. All oh, right, this is really interesting. Uh, Just to say, I now realize I have treated trauma, but I didn't recognize it. Thank you for a very interesting hour. <laughs> oh, so there we are. That, is a, that really is a really, really good comment. Thank you very much for that, Caroline. Yes, yeah, yeah excellent. Let's just go back. Um, Oh, wait a minute. What can, uh, Dawn asks, what can you give me an idea about what's in the essays? I'm not quite sure what she means by that. I mean, she maybe she means the assignments. Yeah, the assignments are much less tra much less frightening than they sound. They're not really assignments. They're more like activities where you just share what you've been doing. Um, and uh, you don't have to write any so, essays. So, so, no, there's no essays. <laughs> no essays are required. It's more just like a sort of conversation, really. Um, so. Yeah, yeah you great. just post up your experience of whatever the exercise has been. Um, you go away and practice it with your clients and then just report in on the forum. So you say, oh, you know, I treated this client this week and this is what happened. And this is what <laughs> Dawn's just that posted kind of up. Thing. She says, phew. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, 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 that's been reassuring. And maybe we yeah. could finish on this, this comment from Bianca, who's had a lot of experience with studying and treating trauma. And she says, I find that shiatsu has even more to offer than psychotherapy as it allows the body mind to heal itself. That's yeah, a really, fantastic. really nice thing to yeah. to finish on. Okay, so that's it. Time's up. It's 8.30. I hope you've enjoyed this webinar. There's a short poll, um, short 
uh, survey it's called when you log off if you could just answer some of those questions about whether you've you know enjoyed it and stuff like that how you found it would be great and if you do want to join us on the online course then you can just email shakura at admin at newenergywork.com um, anytime between now and nine o'clock tomorrow morning she'll be up all night she usually is on tuesday nights before the course <laughs> and um yeah she'll she'll enroll you okay thank you very much and hope to see you on the next webinar okay bye everybody bye